Welcome to Cheery Conversations, where we can all overcome our uncertainties on juicy topics one conversation at a time. Each week, we'll sit down with author, speaker, and pastor Sunny Hennessy, along with a special guest. This week, our guest is Megan Mollett. Megan is the marketing and publishing executive at Life Church and editor in chief of Life and Culture magazine. Her passion has always been to work in the publishing industry. She loves being able to use Life and Culture magazine to reach people through storytelling and real relatable content. On today's episode, we're gonna talk with Sunny and Megan about culture, how we can create it, and how it impacts us. Megan, being the editor-in-chief of the Life and Culture magazine, which is legit, it is beautiful, it is circulating yeah. over our city and beyond in so yeah. many places. So how does culture impact the content that goes into that magazine? Awesome question. I mean, culture impacts everything that goes into the magazine, and mm -hmm. it's in the name. It, it really makes up everything that the articles are comprised of, who we talk to, who we reach out to. Um, we just want to find people that are life-giving and inspiring so that we can share that message with everyone because we want um, to meet people kind of where they're at. You know, wherever you're at in life, if you pick up this magazine, you have the opportunity to um, learn about a life-giving culture, an inspiring culture that can help kind of um, show you how to get there or how to be there. So that's what it's all about. So culture plays a huge role in that. Yeah. What do you think about the perception of culture? Because culture, the way we're talking about it right now, I think is different than most people perceive it. Definitely. I think when we say the word culture, people instantly think like ancestry or your history, you know, where you come from, stuff like that. But culture is so much bigger. And I think that um, life and culture really gives us a sense of what a collective culture can look like in a city or um, in the workplace even. Like, like what does it mean to kind of um, dice out what culture looks like in a little bit broader sense um, and just kind of continue to have that life-giving atmosphere. So uh, what do you kind of think about that? Like how people interpret culture and um, you know, what, what does that kind of mean in our city? Well, I think that we're big on being culture creators and that does differentiate us from how I was raised or what kind of a culture I came from. Cause we're not talking like a region culture. We're talking create culture for your family, create culture for your workplace, create culture for your business. So for me, I feel like we can be the catalyst or show the example of how to create a culture because seven years ago we created a culture. Yeah. We didn't take a culture and then just change it mm -hmm. or or move it a certain direction, we actually created it. It was ground up. When we came to Green Bay, there were uh, one and a half employees, maybe two employees, yeah. loosely. And so you can start with the beginnings. And I think when you start a business, you can start with the owner and the manager. Mm -hmm. And right from that, you start the culture. And that that is such a good place to start because you're starting from the foundation. And really, it's not just ground up foundation, yeah. but it's top down. Yeah. And so the people at the top trickle down that culture. Now we have to be very, uh, we have to work on it a lot. I would yeah. say, I would say right now with more employees, with having, you know, 25 at the church mm -hmm. and then 40 more to 50 more at the exchange, we have to think about that and what we have to repeat that we just naturally began to say in our culture with yeah. two employees. We now have to go, okay, have the last five learned this? Have the last 10 been exposed to this kind of culture? And culture is this invisible thing that you can't mm. see, but honestly you feel it. Mm. And you can put words to it, and it's how we act. And so that's what you do see is when people act out culture, then you begin to feel it and know the culture of a certain business yeah. or organization. Exactly. And so if you're in a workplace where really the culture is kind of poor or it's mm. coming down, you know, gossipy or mm. rude, lying culture, how do you kind of stay in your good culture zone? How do you bring mm. that up with you and, and not get discouraged or I think that's a great question because you said something that's important. Gossip, backdoor conversations mm -hmm. like in an office away from this employee that you chat and then you go in this office mm -hmm. and you talk about a different employee and, and you gossip. That is a culture. 
Like that's not lack of culture, that is a culture. Mm -hmm. So I think before we can bring a good culture, we have to tear down a bad culture yeah. because cultures will fight and one will win. And it's much easier to pull people down to yeah. a bad culture because it's easy to gossip and be frustrated mm -hmm. and irritated and tired. It's easy to pull people down. So we have to like annihilate that culture. It has sure. to be that, that someone, hopefully the boss says, this isn't gonna be what we're gonna do anymore. Yeah. Now our listeners and our, our viewers may not be someone who can be the boss, who yeah. is the one in charge. So they're like, well, how do I make a difference? And how I would say we tell people in our organizations to do it is to be the thermostat, not the thermometer. What I mean by that is you as a team member, maybe not a manager, but a team member can walk in a room and you can bring peace. Mm. You're gonna have a following when that happens enough. You walk into a, a situation and it's heated and you bring calm. Or you walk in a room and it's cold as ice and nobody's looking at each other talking. It's just like, whoa, it's cold in here. Yeah. And you change the thermostat to bring it warmer in the room and people start to, will start to congregate around you for all the good reasons, peace, calm, kindness. And, and it's not like then you take the opportunity to like rebel and take people and divide from the, the business. Mm -hmm. What you do is you're just an example yep. and any circumstance you're in, you create that. And what could happen is one, you could get promoted because the boss goes, I really want more of this. That's often what yeah. happens. And then more people look at you and see that that's what gets you promoted. Yeah. That's what gets you further in the company. And that becomes contagious, mm -hmm. just like negative things can become contagious. Yeah, absolutely. And so like you said, here we really are culture creators and we're working on expanding that culture and sharing more of our inspiring, life-giving, kindness, peace, joy, all of that. So how has that impacted our city and how do you see that reflected back to us in our city right now? Well, I think when we create a good culture, we lift the water table in the sector we're in. So for us, uh, we're not here to compete with other churches. We want to help people find a church that's a good fit for them. Yeah. So we've always said as a church, we're not here to build a church. Mm. We're here to build the kingdom. So if there are churches that are pointing to Jesus and the Bible as the only source yep. and the only way to heaven, then to those churches, we need to send some people mm -hmm. that they're a better fit or the church is a better fit for them. So we're not here to compete, but if we've lifted the water table on how we treat new people yeah. or how we expect people who don't know Jesus to walk in our doors so other churches are getting wiser on, I should expect people who don't already come here to come in, then we've lifted the water table on God trusting us with more. In the business sector, when we opened the exchange, we wanted to lift the water table on what is customer customer service. There's a difference between, and we talk about this in the magazine mm -hmm. and all the time, there's a difference between being nice and kind. Yep. Anybody can be nice, especially for one moment, especially this is how we train our exchange uh, team members, is that it's easy for a waiter or a waitress, and we've all had this experience. They're not really great, the waiter or waitress, all service, mm -hmm. but then they bring the the bill, yeah. they're ready for us to give them a tip. And then they're like, and have a great weekend and thank you mm -hmm. so much. And I am shocked by that because I'm like, you were so obvious, yeah. which makes this more awkward. You were like irritated at me, yeah. you were short with me, you were yeah. sarcastic. And then at the end, you are the kindest, the nicest person, let's right. the nicest person. Yeah. That is a big difference. So we train our, our customer service and our team members to be that we start with kindness because anybody can be nice when somebody else is ni nice, but can you be kind when somebody, I was there yesterday and Brian, who's one of our best and he's at the register and that's why he's so good yeah. there. Uh, the guy walked up to, to place his order and just kind of walked up like a lot of us do, like we're just going through the day, you think yeah. the person checking me out at festival, they're actually, you know, not a human, they're right. a robot. So, <laughs> you know, we're just like, we put the thing up, we're on our phone, we're texting, and we can ignore the person who's even waiting on us. So the, per the guy came up and he stood there, and, and Brian was already looking at him, he said, can I help you? Um, and, and greeted him, and he didn't respond. He just kind of looked at him, and then um, he was get, probably figuring out what he was gonna get, but still didn't respond. And Brian didn't react to that. Like yeah. this guy has kind of, ignored my question and not sure. interacted with me at all, Brian just continued to be kind. And after the order, you could tell the guy was like, this dude's kind of nice. Yeah. That's kindness. That's not reacting to, to somebody. So that water table of customer service going up in coffee and food, I think that that makes other businesses 
either start by saying, well, that stinks, they're doing mm -hmm. so well, or wow, what are they doing that we could implement here? Totally, and I love how people walk into the exchange and they know something's different here. Like you, like you said, you can feel culture, and I think that um, that's so important for us to keep bringing into our home yes. or um, yeah, our workplace, but even bigger, you know, how can you take that to the next level um, through what you do? So that's kind of an interesting idea. I like that you said about home because I jumped over that and that's the most important. You know, if I'm a business owner or I'm a pastor and I do really great at business or when I'm around people, but at home, our culture is just Ugh. Yeah. And and that's where I take out all my frustrations because I've created this great culture at work and and people think I'm wonderful but at home my family's like, "Oh, she is two-faced. She is completely different. Yeah. I get the leftovers." That is a that is a loss. Mm -hmm. I'd rather not create culture and put all my energy there if at home I'm at my worst. So to start with, and everybody listening and viewing should know this, start at home. Mm -hmm. Because one, it's your practice, yeah. it's your lab. Two, it's the most important place you can do that. So the culture of our home needs to be one of peace. Mm -hmm. And that's not easy because you're living with people who are like long-term roommates, you yeah. know, or with your spouse, you're like, it doesn't always go well. But to be the thermostat in your home, mm -hmm. that helps you to not point fingers at the person yeah. who you're mad at in your home, but to go, what can I do? And I could be the thermostat here rather than walking in. And if everybody's at odds, I just respond to. Yeah. So I think home is most important. When we get that right, honestly, it will come naturally to do the culture creating everywhere else. Yeah. I love that. I love that you said like home can be your lab. That was mm. really good. What are some cultures that you've been exposed to that mm. have inspired you? Well, I think that I've been exposed to some cultures that are not great. And yeah. I think I've learned as much or more from the cultures that I didn't love. Mm. I've been a part of some organizations where uh, when the owner walked in, you j everybody yeah, shut down yeah, yeah, and uh, and everybody felt awkward because they talked bad about the right. owner and then that owner walks in and we yeah. all know when we talk bad about somebody to make eye contact with them is like death you're that and you know what that's a cue to us to quit talking behind people's back yeah. when then we have to face them and and god has me on a really short leash like mm -hmm. that's not the theological that he put me on a leash. I ask, God, tug my neck, tug my leash, shorten it, and don't allow me to get away with stuff. So, yeah. so when I do, and I'm not perfect, but when I do slip up, because I try not to, when I do talk about somebody behind their back, would, wouldn't it just be like God, because the relationship I have with him is mm -hmm. tug my leash, I will see them yeah. the next day. Yeah. and be like, oh, yes, right. that's right, I shouldn't do it. So to my point, I've been in cultures that that was just the culture, backbiting, behind closed door issues, which made me think if I'm ever in charge of anything, I never want this culture because this is awkward, painful, and mm -hmm. frankly, I don't wanna get up in the morning and go there. Yeah. And so I've learned more from negative cultures than anything, but then some good cultures have been places and i when i really compare the good cultures were locations or businesses or churches that were flourishing mm. and the bible says that a tree is known by its fruit yeah. and that, that's for businesses too yeah. i think our magazine like yeah. the fruit of the magazine is broad people we can't keep them on newsstands and that's because the source the tree is good yeah. and we're pointing to truth and jesus even if it's just throughout in our in in small doses uh, so all of the cultures that were good they had such fruit right and so I think that's how we know if if a business or a culture is good is is it growing absolutely and I I love how you were kind of saying like concepts of a bad culture are going to be talking behind each other's back or saying bad things but what if we start talking good behind each other's oh. back and more than that good to each other's faces yes. and just kind of bringing you know a, even a simple compliment or mm -hmm. um, appreciation and noticing um, something that someone else has done and i think that's really important in um, any type of culture in general like a really inspiring yes. business organization or person is always going to be someone who credit someone else before themselves so good. or points mm -hmm. the attention to someone and gives them the compliment and the praise. So um, where do you see that reflected in our city in general? I, I love 
teachability and mm -hmm. that's really what you're talking about is pointing to someone else before ourselves. Yeah. Teachability, one of the statements we have actually in our culture book and our culture documents for our, our team is uh, that I can be the student even when I'm the expert yeah. in that area. Yeah. Like if somebody wants to start talking to me about opening a coffee house, if my first reaction is I've opened one, I've opened actually many and I've opened one that's yeah. successful, <laughs> so you have nothing to tell me. That's zero teachability. That's a lack of teachability. And one, that's just unattractive. Mm. And two, that is that is going to steal from a culture. But if I can say, yes, tell me, I can learn tips and traits. People who are teachable are inspired yeah. and are inspiring. When someone is asking questions rather than telling everything they know, it inspires me to ask more questions mm -hmm. rather than be a know-it-all. Right. Because let's be honest, nobody likes a know-it-all. Yep. So again, that's a way we, individually in an organization, whether we're at the top or we're at the bottom, yeah. can create a great culture is be a student, be teachable in everything. So good. I love that. I love um, that good cultures are inspiring. And mm. we can do that in a lot of different ways. We're gonna take a quick break and we're gonna show you how you can help be inspiring just by taking a magazine like Life and Culture and putting it on someone's desk. Welcome back. Each edition of Life and Culture Magazine just gets better and better, so be sure to pick up our newest edition. Megan, let's continue this conversation about culture. Yeah, so now that we kind of have a better understanding of what a good culture should look like, yeah. how do we go back into our community and support that? How do we keep pouring in um, to the good culture? I really like words yeah. because I think <laughs> words just inspire themselves. So there's some words we use and I am cool if anybody wants to take these and use these because I didn't create them. <laughs> uh, peace, I think peacefulness and the feeling of peace, it encompasses calm, all of that. So peace mm -hmm. is one of our words. Life giving is our overarching word. So when I always have that in my head, life giving, life giving, I think mm -hmm. about, should I stay in this friendship? Because it feels like it's life taking. Like mm -hmm. I feel worse when I talk to this friend I've had so for good. 30, yeah. 30 years, I'm too young for that, but <laughs> that I've had for 10 years. And it's just, maybe the season is over. I, I think about, do I wanna go back and uh, watch that movie with Sean? Because afterwards I just felt, ugh. So do I really wanna do that? So I yeah. filter everything through life-giving. Uh, teachable, we talked about that today. I think if people could have in their head, be teachable, be a student. Don't try to think, and, and out of insecurity, we try to become the expert in so many situations. Uh, another word is kind, mm -hmm. kind versus nice, that's huge. Mm -hmm. And then our last one is inspired. And if, again, my filter for life at home, like am I inspiring my kids to go for it? Or am I telling them when they offer up their newest idea? Like, yeah, but you know what? You need to get an education. Right. Cause you know, nobody's done anything without it. And they go, oh, my dream I just shared with you, you just poo pooed because that is, that is, you know, more logical. No, I want them to be inspired. Yeah. And so when we have those words ringing in our head, I think it changes us. And therefore we begin to act out those words. Mm, so good. So you and Sean are successful culture creators. You've done it at The Exchange, you've done it at Life Church, you've done it in other businesses. What would you say to the viewer or the listener who maybe doesn't own a business, they're mm -hmm. not their own boss? How can they be culture creators in the space that they're in? Sean and I both believe that everybody's a leader in, in some form or another. I mean, mm -hmm. if you're in a marriage and you're a male, you should lead your home, yeah. so you are a leader. If you have children, mom and dad are leaders. 
there's very few people that lead zero people. And here's the other thing, I lead myself. Mm. I have to every day lead myself or I just go backwards. Like when we're not moving forward and we're just like in neutral, you know, ever been in a car that you put neutral, it rolls back. Yeah. And that's life. When we're just in neutral and we're not pushing forward to be better and to grow and to be a leader of our own life, then we just roll back. And so if you go, well, I don't own a business, I don't lead a church, it doesn't matter. You lead something. I mean, I'm not trying to be mean, but like somebody who's like, I literally live alone. I lead no one. I work from home. I work for people. And they, I mean, you go, I lead my cat. Like I have yeah. a cat, like that's it. <laughs> right. But here's the deal. Again, you lead yourself. So start at home, start by speaking life over yourself and mm -hmm. having plans for yourself. You don't have to have plans for 10 years, I'm going to start a business, just have plans to be better next month than you are this month. Because if that adds up to every month I get better, by the end of the year, I am a better human being mm -hmm. than I was a year ago. And ultimately our moral compass is Jesus. Mm -hmm. So where is my standard? It's what would Jesus do? How would he act? How would he react? Yeah. And I can get better at that every yeah. single month. So good. I love that. I love the conversation about culture and the different perspective that both of you have brought to it. So thank you so much for joining in this conversation with us today. If you'd like to look at the newest edition of Life and Culture magazine, you can check it out in the link that we have in our comments. You can also join Instagram for Life and Culture at Life and Culture magazine. And I would love to connect with you for cheery conversations, for topics you might want to hear about, guests we can have on, and I'd love to connect directly. So just go to SunnyHennessy.com to connect with me. Join us next week at the same time for another cheery conversation.